Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. We welcome you on this glorious Sunday. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to be together with your people once again. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to this place for this time. And at this hour, Lord, you have caused us to, to dwell in the kingdom for such a time as this. And we thank you that you've raised us up for this strategic hour. Lord, we just believe for the anointing of your spirit to move through this place today and touch every heart and every life. It's your anointing that breaks the yoke of oppression. And so we give you praise and thanks for it. In Jesus' name. May your people leave this place today, not the same as they came in. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Once a sinner far from Jesus, I was perishing with hope. But the blessed Savior heard me when I cried. Then he threw his arms around me. Is full, and I'm living on the hallelujah side. Glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Let me sing my Savior's praises far and wide. Oh, yeah, for I've opened up toward heaven and all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, the world may sweep around me with her dazzle. Yet I envy not her vanities and pride. For my soul looks up to heaven where the golden sunlight be. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Where glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs grow. Help me sing my Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul. the tempter to persuade me off this ride. For I'm safe in God's pavilion, happy in His love and grace. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. All right now. Glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs rule. Help me sing my Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul. Here the sun is always shining, here the sky is always bright. There's no place for gloomy Christians to abide. For my soul is filled with music and my heart with great delight. And I'm living on the hallelujah side all right now. Glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs grow. Help me sing my Savior's praise far and wide. I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul, and I'm living on the hallelujah side. And upon the streets of glory, when we've reached the other shore, and have safely crossed the Jordan's rolling tide, you will find me shouting glory just outside my mansion door, where I'm living on the hallelujah side. Glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Help me sing my Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Where now I'm leaving, leaving 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We feel Jesus in this place. Lord, we just pray that you would just minister your life and your power to every soul gathered today, both those who are joining us by live stream and those who are here in the house. My, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless your holy, holy, holy name. My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bless your name. I bless your name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. My, my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. My, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just give you praise. We just give you honor. We just give you glory. You're worthy to receive it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My, my, thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Anyone have a testimony that you want to lift up to the Lord today, a word of testimony? <laughs> go ahead. Go, right, sister, go ahead. I want to thank God for healing my body. Amen. Amen. You know, I woke up this morning and my blood sugars have been out of this world. Three, four, five, six hundred. You know, so high that my machine says, eh, till, can't tell yet. You know, error. Error. <laughs> it always errors, you know. And I woke up this morning. Now, mind you, last night, I ate chocolate ice cream. Come on. Last night, I had, you know, things maybe I should have been eating, you know. But I ate them anyway because, you know what, for the last three days, I've been listening to Kenneth Hagin, you know. And he says, the word. It's all about the word. It's all about the word. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about the word. Yep. I woke up this morning, checked in my blood, 142. Come on, hallelujah. Come on. You know, Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's already healed me. Amen. Amen. You know, that chocolate ice cream is good. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know what? It's all about the word. Amen. No matter what anybody says, it's Amen. all about the word. Amen. Jesus yeah. is the word. That's right. Amen. You know? Amen. So if you doubt, when in doubt, Go back to the word. That's right. Right. The word. It's Amen. all about the word. Amen. And that's all it's about. Amen. And I thank God for the word. Amen. I thank yes. God for the word. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what else he says? His word cannot return to him void. Amen. If he said it, yes. it's in the Bible, it's there. Come on. Amen. It's there. Right. You can't change it. You can't make it do different. Come on now. You can't make it be something else because it's the word. That's right. Amen. It's settled. It's settled. Amen. Exactly. Hallelujah. And that's good enough for me. We give him praise. Thank yeah, you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. Amen, Amen God brother. God cannot. God cannot lie. God. That's right. Brother yeah. Allen? Yeah. Um, yesterday, or was it yesterday? I was sitting sitting around, and I was thinking about God, the Lord, Jesus Christ, and healing these days, and it reminds me, and we all know this, we've heard it a billion times, that the devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, but Jesus came to give life and Come to on. more abundantly. Yes. And, mm -hmm. it, and I'm not saying that not everybody interprets that as, well, God will heal you. But if you really think about
about it. Why would the God of order want our bodies to be out of order? He right. wants to be honest. If you really want to narrow it down, that's right. He is a God of order, not chaos. That's right. And the world is chaotic. Amen. Our flesh is chaotic. Yes. But God, if you can stand on his word and the truth, he will heal. And I want you to remember to pray for my back. My lowest, one of my lower discs is hitting the sciatic nerve. Ooh. They said it's inoperable. And, um, well, they said they can fuse it, but the doctor said don't do that. He says, don't, I don't want to do that, he said. Right. And, um, but I believe either I'm going to find a surgeon that says I'm going to go in there anyways, or God's going to heal it instantly. That's right. And that's yeah. not a lack of faith. One way or another, God's going to heal it. That's right. And Amen. I believe that and everything else. God is a God of order. That's right. Amen. Well, you think about the word disease. Now, if you break it down, dis-ease. It's the lack of ease. It's the opposite of ease. Dis-ease. So God's a God of order, and that, that, that's a, that, that'll flat preach. I'm writing that down. That I, I was watching, uh, as you know, Ben Carson, yep. and one of the things he said is they brought this little boy in, and he was just a mess, and there was this tumor wrapped around part of his brain stem. And he was told by all these other doctors, and this is where faith in the Word comes in, that it was totally inoperable. He looked at everything and said, there's nothing I can do. And the couple stood there and said, but the Lord said to bring him to you. Right. But the Lord said, bring him to you. But the Lord said, he said, I've never seen such faith. And he said, when he got in there, it was as bad as they said. But then he went in again, and there was a, underneath all that mess was a beautiful, white, glistening brain stem. And he was able, and within three days, that little boy left the hospital. Ooh, praise the Lord. And he said, but the Lord said. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. The word. And That's so, what makes the difference, right? I, I encourage anybody to, to watch that because it gives us more hope to realize it's not us. It's what he does through us yep. for others. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anyone else with a prayer need or a testimony to share this morning? Prayer need, head to toe. All right, all right. He can do that. Yeah, yeah. Prayer. All right, David. My shoulder. Your shoulder. Get that taken care of, right? Amen, brother. Good to see you. Anyone else with a prayer need? I could, be? I'm sorry. Go I ahead. could serve uh, Dr. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If you got my knee, I'm praising the Lord because it's kind of a fight right now. But Amen. Amen. Let's let's set ourselves in agreement on that. Yes. Amen. Go ahead. I need to prayer for muscle pain. All right. Amen. All right. All right. Anyone else before we pray? For my son, he's got pneumonia. Oh, mm -hmm. not good. All right. We pray on that today. All right. Don't forget to look at the bulletin. Yes. I have to say that. Yes, sir. Sometimes I spend hours on it because it's just crazy. That's right. Yeah. Take a look. He does a good job, amen. So yeah, take take a look at that bulletin. We we uh, brother Allen puts that together and uh, does a good job, and uh, it, there's a lot of stuff in there. So make sure you take a look at it, amen. Take it with you, amen. You know, there's prayer things in there you can pray about during the week, and uh, so that's awesome. All right, anyone else with a prayer? You need it. Prayer for my neighbor. All right. Oh, just pray for Jay. Okay. He he ain't come back home. Okay. He's voted uh, some kind of a home. On the home? Okay. All right. All right. I set ourselves in agreement on these things. Father, you hear these requests today. Lord, we know that you are the God who is more than enough. We know that you are our Jehovah Rafika. You are our, Je our God that heals us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are even now, these healing needs are being met right now in the name of Jesus for, for Alan and for, for David and for B, Lord, my mom, Lord, for, 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 for Tara, Father, for all these things, for, for Linda's son, Father, all these areas that need a touch from you. In the name of Jesus, we believe for the healing power of God just to meet these needs. And Father, Lord, we just give you the praise and honor and glory. And we will give you the praise as the testimonies come forth of what you have done. 
and we give it to you right now. We roll every care, every situation over unto you in the name of Jesus. And we declare that we are the healed. We are the healed church in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. And uh, Brother Alec, can I get you today to wait on the, the people with the offering plates as John is in here? Sure. But uh, we're going to receive our offering today. And, uh, and this is third Sunday. Anything not designated tithes or elsewise is building expenses. And so uh, let's just worship the Lord with our offering right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what stole from me as I took back what stole from me as I took back what stole from me. I said I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what stole from me. Oh, he's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Yes, he's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. I said I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Yes, I took back what he stole from me. Well, I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I. Took back what he stole from me. I said he's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Yes, he's under my feet. I said he's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. Well, Satan is under my feet. One more now. I said I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Yes, I took back what he stole from me. I said. Uh, Took back what he stole from me when I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. I said, He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. Yes, he's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. Yes, he's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. Yes, he's under my feet. Oh, now my victory is complete. Jesus told principalities, made a show of him openly. He's under my feet. The devil's under my feet. All right, one more now. I said he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Now my healing, now my healing is complete. Jesus, for the principalities, made a show of them openly. He's under my feet. Yes, he's under my feet. All right, now one more. I said he's under my feet. He's under my feet. Now my victory, now my victory is complete. Jesus, for the principalities, made a show of him openly. He's under my feet, devil's under my feet. I said, Jesus, for the principalities, made a show of him openly. He's under my feet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Yes. Praise the Lord. Woo. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. My mind. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's take up the word today. Amen. 
Let's take up our Bibles and say this after me. This is the word of God. The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light into my path. I receive the light. I receive the light. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Because it is impossible. Because it is impossible. Woo! For God to lie. Impossible. Yeah, come on. Come on. Impossible. Come on. Hallelujah. I word will not return to me void. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Do what it's been sent to do. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, grab a hold of that. Dad, grab a hold of that. It'll do what it was sent to do. Amen. Amen. The word's not going to return void. No. It's not going to. You know what that means? It means empty. Empty. Yeah. It's not going to return empty. No. It's going to. It's, it's going to accomplish what it is sent to do and prosper in the area to which it is sent. Hallelujah. Down, shaking the devil. Yeah. Amen. Overflow. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. We're going to flicker up here. Her. Come on. Yeah. Come on. For the Lord says, I have set before you an open door. I have set before you an open door of opportunity and utterance. So go through that door, for I am even in these days opening opportunities and things to my people that has not been seen by previous generations. For it is indeed the last days. It is indeed the time of the end. So I have set before my people who will lay hold of my promises and lay hold of my word and grab hold of my sayings and do them. I will cause you to rise up and do exploits, says the Lord. And I have set before you an open door. So go through it. Oh, you might say, I don't know what's on the, on the other side. But I call you to trust me. I call you to trust me. I call you to go where I, where I tell you to go, to do what I tell you to do, to say what I tell you to say, and not worry about what you're going to say, because in that hour, as my word says, it will be my spirit speaking through you. So go through the open door. I have set before thee an open door, says God. My, my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May the blessed Holy Spirit reach out and touch those who are, who are with us via live stream right now. In the name of Jesus, where healing is needed, where deliverance is needed, where provision is needed, just flow to your people right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, let's open those Bibles to Psalm 37. Psalm 37 is where we were last time. We didn't get everything done. And we're talking about an un, a godly response to an ungodly world. How many of you know we live in an ungodly world? Uh, how many of you know we live in an ungodly time? We live in a time where the sayings and the precepts of God are that, that really uh, this country was founded on are being cast aside. No, we live in an ungodly society, but you see... We're called to give a godly response. And Psalm 37 talks about that. I saw this when I was looking at this passage. 
David said there, as this, this is a psalm of David, he said, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. I saw in that, first of all, what we're not supposed to do. We're, we're, we're to fret not, and that means in Hebrew, we're not to boil over, we're not to glow, we're not to warm up. Uh, in anger when we see people that are just plain doing wrong. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people doing wrong today. There's a lot of wrong in the world. And not only that, not only that, he said, he said that he not be thou, uh, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. That's those that do just evil things. Evil things. In fact, if you... Uh, the counterpart to this word over in the New Testament, the counterpart of it, is, is, uh, is a word that means lawless. That people are doing lawless things. And, and how many of you know that it's not, we're not talking about the laws of New York City. We're not even talking about the laws of the United States. Oh, plenty of the United States laws are being broken. But I'm talking about we live in a time where people are breaking and not doing and not honoring the law of God. That's what, that's what iniquity is. It is to set aside the law of God. What God says is right. Huh? There are people that are doing against that. Well, we're not to boil over in wrath and anger because there is coming a day, he says here, they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. There's coming a day, I want you to know, that all that's wrong is going to be made right. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. There's going to be made right. And, and, and we need to trust God to do that. We need to give him time. Well, we found out what we were to do. He says here, beginning at verse 3, he says, trust in the Lord. We found out that trust means to hold to. It means to cling to. It means to rely on. It means to have confidence in. It means to confide in. Who? What, the government? No. Other people? No. We trust in the Lord. And as we pointed out last time, Amen. that is that word, Lord, when, it, when you see it in all in uppercase there, as it is in this passage, L-O-R-D translates the four Hebrew consonants, yud He vav He, And it speaks of Yehovah, Jehovah, Yahweh, various ways to, to uh, pronounce that. But it is the ineffable name of God, and it describes the covenant-making, covenant-keeping God. It's a God, the God who says what he says and does what he says and won't break that which has come out of his mouth. He will not alter it. I mean, if you know, man, uh, man human beings, that is, alters what comes out of their mouth all the time. Huh? In, a, in the United States, we have become very good at becoming covenant breakers, yeah. truce breakers. Now, you could study our history, and I'm telling you, uh, this is true with American history. This is true with church history. There are a lot of, of embarrassing moments in history where, where things have been done wrong, where covenants have been broken, where truces have been broken, where promises have been broken. But see, we're dealing with a God who could swear by no higher, so he swore by himself a blood-sworn oath cut in the blood in the case of the new covenant, cut in the body and blood of Jesus, and he could swear by no higher, so he swears by himself. And he says, look, if I'm not going to keep what I said I would keep because I have sworn by myself, I have put my name on the line, and if I don't make good on what I have said, I would have to cease to be God. That's how serious it is. He keeps his word. Uh -huh. Well, we can trust him. We can rely on him. And because we trust in, rely on, have confidence in the Lord, we found out that we do good. We do excellent. We do what is appropriate. We do what is right. Why? Because we trust the Lord. And we talked about that last time. We talked about this picturing the good shepherd watching over the sheep. And just like the good shepherd feeds and protects and cares for the sheep, our good shepherd Jesus will take care of, watch over, and provide for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we delight. That's what else he says here. He says, delight thyself also 
in the Lord. Now, delight is that Hebrew anag, anag, and it means to be, check this out, it means to be soft or pliable. It means to be soft or pliable. In fact, the picture there is a tree bending with the wind. A tree bending with the wind. We have this video that we like to watch on uh, YouTube. Joyce Ann has found these videos that uh, you can listen to to go to sleep. And it's wind, it's rain, it's, you know, it's all these things that make you just kind of lay back and relax. Well, there's this one that's a hurricane. And, 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 and you can see these trees just whipping and bending in the breeze. Well, that's what that Hebrew word aneg, delight, means. It means to be soft or pliable when the wind of God blows on you. You bend his way. You don't remain rigid and break. You bend his way. Amen. All right. And, and uh, some translations have this, be happy with the Lord, seek your happiness in the Lord, enjoy serving the Lord. Those are good, but it suggests, watch this, being his to command. He says, you go here, you go there. You, you do this, you do it. You say this, you say it. You, you, you are his to command. And because we do this, because we uh, place ourselves at his command, the word says, watch this, that he will give thee the desires of thine heart. Yeah. Now, now watch this. Watch this. It will be drawn out of him and given to you. His desire, watch this, watch this. He will give he, it will be drawn out of him. He will give it to you. This means also a place of quietness and the spoils drawn out after battle. Woo. Hey, when you go through the battle, when you go through the fire, as you are delighting yourself, that is bending to the wind of the spirit being his to command. Hey, when the battle's all over, the spoils will be yours. Hallelujah. That which, as we sang that song, that which the enemy has taken from you. Hey, when the thief is discovered, the Bible says that he must give back up to sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. I'm telling you, if you will do what the word says, if the enemy has stolen from you, he's got to give back. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. He has to. He doesn't have any choice. He can't sit back and say, well, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, you know, sometimes sometimes kids will say, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. You ever got up on uh, Monday morning if you had to go to work and say, I don't want to? Uh huh? You ever gotten up on Monday and wished it was Friday? Huh? Come on. Well, I'm telling you, but, you know, the devil might say, I don't want to give back all the substance of my house. But he doesn't have any choice. He doesn't have any choice. He can't say, I don't want it. He's got to give it back. Watch this, though. Watch this. He says, commit, commit, commit. You know what that is? That is to roll, to roll on, to roll away on. The New, Test New Testament counterpart to that would be 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So we roll on to him. We roll unto him all the cares, all the anxieties, all the pressures of life. I want to tell you something. I don't know if you've noticed, but the... But the pressure has been turned up in this hour. Uh -huh. and, 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 and you know what? What you're going through wouldn't be half as bad as it is if it wasn't for the pressure of it. Yeah. That pressure. I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever been dealing with something and you feel just like an elephant sitting on your chest. Now, I have never had an elephant set on my chest, but I feel like if I had an elephant set on my chest, see if you can track with me like this on this, if an elephant was sitting on your chest, there'd be some pressure. And pain. And pain, pressure. We're going to get to the pain part. Uh, the, the pressure, the pressure. Yeah, you feel this pressure. And, I, and I, I'm going to tell you something. It's been ramped up. It's been ramped up. See, because here's the deal. Here's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get us, check this out. He's trying to get us to quit. That's right. 
He wants you to lay down the word. He wants you to lay down your testimony. He wants you to cast away your confidence. Watch this. He wants you to cast away your confidence and give up and get out of the race. That's what he's after. But I'm telling you, as we commit, that is, we roll, we roll on, we roll away on all of those things. Watch this. Watch this. Commit, 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 roll away on, roll on to thy way unto the Lord. Now, that is a interesting, though that word way, translated way, is an interesting Hebrew word. It's that Hebrew word derek. Derek. I had a I have a cousin named Derek, and I didn't know in Hebrew his name meant way. But it does. The De Derek, a Derek in Hebrew, it describes a road traveled, it describes the course of your life. So you roll unto him your Derek, your way, your course of life. And in Hebrew, the, and, and in Hebrew, in ancient Hebrew, it really described the distance between the feet of a step. And so every step that you walk along the way. Thank you, Lord. Um, you ever you ever seen that scripture? In, uh, what is it, Proverbs 26, 3, that says, I might get the address wrong here, but I know, I know the scripture. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he, he shall not depart from it. You ever heard that scripture? Well, I just felt prompted to the Holy Spirit to say this, I'm not even sure why. But we have thought, I thought, okay, I thought, and you didn't think, I thought that meant you raise your kids in church, you teach them to read the Bible, you teach them to pray, you teach them all these things, and yes, it includes that, but you know what? That word way there in, saw, in, in that proverb is the, same as the, is the same as the Hebrew here. It is train up a child in the derrick he should go. Train him up in the path he should be walking on. And when he is old, he'll not depart from it. Now, what you need to do is get before God. Now, all, most all of us here, we have raised children, but I'm telling you this, uh, some of might hear this, who has not raised children, uh, what, what, what it means is you get before God and you say, God, what is your purpose for this child? What is the path you have marked out for them? And you have the Holy Ghost reveal that to them. And then you work with them to prepare them to walk on that Derek, that path that God has laid out for them them to walk on and the promise is when they are old they'll not depart from the path God laid out for them to walk on Amen. that's what that means hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus see but 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 he says he says hallelujah Commit your Derek, your bro travel, the steps of your feet. Hey, no wonder the psalmist goes on to say, trust, cling to the Lord, because your security and my security is found in him. Your support comes from him. As you and I commit the path of our lives to him, he brings it to pass. He accomplishes what needs to be done. And he's got a derrick, a path of life for every one of his people. Uh -huh. I remember years ago, I didn't know anything about Derek. I didn't know anything. I knew he was my cousin. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything about Derek being the way that God in the path, God had marked out for you. I've learned that later. But here's the thing. Years ago, I don't know if anybody ever has been frustrated other than me. Have you ever had any frustration in your life? Probably not, probably not, but I, I have had some I have I have had some frustration. And I was frustrated one day years and years ago, and I was heading over to do a Bible study in uh, Coon Rapids at this nursing home that I did one back there years ago. 
And I was driving along and I was all by myself that day. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what is it that you have for me? What do you want me to do? And the Lord said, you were one of my last days revival preachers. Woo! Last days yes, revival preachers. Now, at the time, I thought it meant that I was called to be an evangelist, but that's not what it meant. He meant that he had raised me up to preach in this hour, which is the last days. And hey, uh, that means we get to be part of this last days outpouring of the Holy Ghost, because I'm telling you, there is coming a move of God on the, in this hour that will pale in significance everything God has done before. You know why? because he's going to pour out the former rain. Joel talked about it. He's going to pour out the former rain and he's going to pour out the latter rain all in one last day's outpouring. All the glories of the former and all the glories of the latter coming together in one final outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And we're on the cusp of it right now, I'm telling you. The best wine. Hallelujah. Uncle Frank. Yeah, we were... Uh, we were set I gotta hurry, but we were setting one day years ago, and 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 some of you may know these names. Uh, they were very these folks were very prominent in the Church of God of Prophecy, but they were aunt and uncle to us, Frank and Elva Howard. And uh, we were setting one day at Hardy's in Perry that burned down later, <laughs> and uh, we were sitting there having. I don't know, coffee or something. And uh, Frank didn't talk a whole lot. But if he did, he was like E.F. Hutton, you better listen. Uh, probably dated myself, but I don't even have the E.F. Hutton commercials anymore. But anyway, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens, all right? If you'd ever heard that commercial, then that's all right. Look it up on YouTube. But anyway, uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> we were sitting there, and he got real quiet. As he was always quiet, but he, like he was thinking. And all of a sudden, he just looks up and he says, there is coming in these last days a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. And then he kind of looked down again for a second or two. And he looked up and he says, but I won't be here for it. Then he pointed and he says, but, but you're part of it. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, watch this. Watch this. He says, here, here's, in my opinion, here's the best part. Hang with me here. Hang with me. He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. We're going to look at verse 7 here. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. You know what that word rest there means? It means to be silent, it means to be still, it means to wait. And listen, this, this is what I saw. This is a natural progression. We trust in the Lord, we do good, knowing the good shepherd is watching over us. We are soft and pliable in the master's hand, knowing that from him flows everything that we need. We commit the path of our life, every step to him, clinging to our source of security, knowing as I do, he is bringing to pass his plans and purposes for my life. My life. Yes, then I can rest. Ooh, hallelujah. And here's what I jotted down. I put this in italics so I, I, I would be able to emphasize it. Check this out. Learn this today, beloved. You will never hear his voice if you are doing all the talking. You will never hear his voice if you are doing all the talking. While we are resting we are waiting. And can I tell you, you probably know this, but can I tell you, you're going to see something here. Waiting is really the hardest part of the process. Yes. Why? 
Because, oh, and, and, and I'm telling you, when I began to dig this out, this was so cool. I, 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 I'm so glad I'm going to share this with you. And I think you will be too. Because here it is. Because this weighing process is first painful. The Hebrew word here, check this. It describes the drilling or the boring of a hole. It describes the piercing of the ear to insert an earring. It describes, well, I thought this was cool. It describes being sliced like a cake. Lovely. All right, watch it now. It describes pain as from a piercing sore, but oh, but wait. Like, 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 like the late infomercial guy used to say, but wait, there's more. <laughs> There's more. Check this out. It is secondly, the same Hebrew word is secondly pleasurable. This same word, check this out, describes spinning or whirling about in a dance. You endure the drill, it will end in a dance. Woo, hallelujah. You endure the drill. Yeah, the drill part isn't, isn't uh, pleasant. The, the, the slicing of the cake part isn't, isn't pleasant. But I want to tell you something. What it yields at the end of the process is, a, is pleasurable because, again, it describes whirling about in a dance. You endure the drill. It ends in the dance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hey, we rest in him. We wait on him. And you know what? You know that scripture that says, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. But you know what? That word wait there in that passage in Isaiah chapter 40, it describes... It is the picture. Now, this was cool. I know, I know cool is not a sophisticated theological term. And, 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 and you know, I'm going to tell you something. I just decided something yesterday. What? I just decided something. I am what I am. I, I, I am what I am, and that's all I am, me and Popeye. Okay? All right? So, so I, I, I'm not going to try to be something I am not. I am what I am. Okay, so if I say something's cool, that, it, it, that that's okay, because that, that's just what I say. But this is cool, because that word wait, if you look at the picture in the Hebrew, the picture is like weaving a basket or doing macrame. It's taking strands and twisting them and blending them together and, and tying them together. And, and, and like a crocheting, you're, you're just taking all this thread and you're, you're, you're making these, these chains. And, and, and here's the bottom line. Those of us who are waiting on the Lord and this process is going on. See, we think of wait in, in Western culture. We think of it as doing nothing. I'm waiting. I'm doing nothing. No, you're waiting at a traffic light. You think you're doing nothing. You wait in a waiting room and you're doing nothing. But see, in Hebrew, to wait does not mean do nothing. To, to wait means something is happening. And when you go through the process, you're going to come out. And, and when the devil looks over and he sees you coming out of that process because you're all wound together, you're waiting on the Lord. You're all twisted together. You're all knotted up. You're all weaved together with him. The devil looks up and says, wait a minute, I can't tell where they are end and God begins and where God ends and they begin. They end. Amen. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! Yeah, because we're all tied. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Oh, wait a minute. Real quick. There is this particular eagle and they go through a process every few years. Didn't he say they will mount up with wings as eagles? I can't help but think that the Holy Ghost didn't have this in mind. Because there's this particular eagle and what they do every few years, they get renewed. Yeah, how do they get renewed? I'm glad you asked that question because I'm going to tell you right now real quick. <laughs> how do they get renewed? They fly up to a high mountain and they get in their nest. 
And what they do is they be begin to pull out all their feathers. They begin to pluck out all their feathers with their, with their mouth, their beak. Pluck them out, pluck them out. Pretty soon, all you got is a plucked eagle. Grind, 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 grind until there is nothing but a stub left. And I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing uglier than, a, than an eagle with a stub for a beak with no feathers. Uh, but this eagle does this. And then he sits there. I'm talking about mounting up with wings like eagles. I'm talking about renewing your strength like the eagles. I'm talking about going through the process. And in the process of time, hey, it's not the last word for Mr. Eagle. Because as he sits there, all those feathers get, begin to grow back. And all of a sudden, a new beak begins to grow. And when he goes through the process, he's got brand new feathers. He's got a brand new beak. And I want to tell you, he lights off of that mountain flying higher. Yeah, and also his talons. Thank you. He also pulls out his talons. And so he sits there. So oh, this is even worse. He sits there with no beak, no feathers, and no talons. But, but pretty soon, pretty soon, those talons grow back. And those feathers grow back. And that beak grows back. He's got new talons. He's got new feathers. He's got a new beak. And guess what? He lights off of that mountain and he sails in the sky higher than he's ever flown before because he's renewed. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, hey, the, the psalmist, and I got to say this in conclusion, the psalmist has one more piece of godly counsel for us. He says, cease from wrath and <laughs> cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Yes, we live in a fallen, ungodly world. How we respond to the evil and injustice around us makes all the difference. We have clear instructions and wonderful promises in the word of God. And may we choose to respond accordingly. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you that you have helped us today. Even in my faulting efforts that you have helped us get the word out there. You have helped us get the message across. And I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, that this word will go forth as we've declared today. It will not return void. It will not return empty. It will accomplish that which it is sent to do, and it will prosper in the area to which it is sent. We commit your people unto you and the word of your grace, which is able to build them and give them inheritance among all who are sanctified, Lord. We trust you. We trust you. And Lord, we roll the care of every situation unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, we put his name upon you with these words. And the promise of the word is that he will bless you. Amen. And so we declare that you are blessed to be a blessing. Prospering in everything you set your hand to in Jesus name. Now, I want to encourage you to greet your brothers and sisters today. Let them know you're glad they're here. And, uh, and we, we just are glad that folks joined us by live stream. We're thankful that people are going to pick it up later. You know, we, we were thankful to have the opportunity to minister the word. And uh, we just ask that uh, you just receive the word by faith and uh, it will bless you. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Be blessed in Jesus name.